Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Racing the Races. So we're going to have a look at day three of Goodwood. We've also got one selection at Galway. Um, so we'll start off at Goodwood looking at the 150. And the horse I like here is, um, interestingly, because it's the first race of the day, everybody can see the ratings for this race, including free members. You can always see the first race of the day. You can see all of the stats available. And I am going to side with our top rated horse here in Blake. Now, I do like this R1 figure that does catch my eye. A uh, very impressive performance at Sandown. When the coming off the back of an unlucky run at Epsom, um, things didn't quite go to plan. It was very slowly away. Didn't get a clear run. Hung left um, at Epsom. Still running really good race behind Persica, Portsmouth, Red Hot Whisper. The front two were the right two horses, so I'm quite happy with that. I think Blake should have finished third um, at worst. Um... And with that in mind, being then beaten by the right two horses, I think the form is strong. Now, certainly suggested that next time out, going to Sandown, winning at Sandown, um, and winning comfortably. Winning comfortably under Billy Lochnane, um, winning by, what was it, one and three quarter lengths. Granted, did go up £10 for that, but I feel that this horse could be very, very progressive now they've um, stepped up in trip. I think the trip has really helped. Um, this mile and two trip has almost been the making of him yes he switches on to faster ground he goes to good to firm from soft and good to soft but i think that'll be fine um zoffany progeny have a decent record on this ground so i'm not too worried about that um and i just that r figure is so eye-catching um we're suggesting that was a huge performance even taking into account the rise in the handicap that's one of the things our ratings do um, so our R figures take into account what their new handicap mark is. So if that horse, for example, Blake had been given a 125 for that, we would have said whilst it was a good performance, under this new mark, this new high, uh, £10 higher mark, it would be difficult for the horse to overcome. However, we're not saying that here. We're saying that we think that was a very good performance, justified, um, the £10 was justified and could even be uh, still well handicapped. You know, you often hear people say, oh, he looks like he's very well handicapped after the horse has won a race. Well, how do you know? You don't know what's going to go up. That's what our, our figures, our R figures do take into account when you see their ratings next time out. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm quite a fan of uh, Blake here. And I think he's going to run a really big race um, in the first. And he is currently available at, let's have a look. He's currently available at 8 to 1. And I would be very happy with 8 to 1 about Blake. Just hoping that Jim Crowley gives uh, his ride, uh, his horse a better ride than he did yesterday on Enfajar. Thought that was a terrible ride, to be honest, um, and hardly mentioned on ITV. Moving on to the 2.25, um, the Richmond Stakes. The favourite in this race is the Striking Viking, and he's the right favourite. Uh, personally, I think he'll win this, and I think he'll win this quite comfortably, to be honest. I think his form is rock solid. Uh, that's second behind Henry Matisse. Henry Matisse is a really good piece of form, beating Arizona Blaze and Tunbridge Wells, Principality back in fifth. I think that's top quality form. Um, interesting to see of new Wath Wathnan Racing when and purchased the horse. They purchased the horse on the 30th of June, so they purchased him after Royal Ascot. So they've purchased him probably with this race in mind, rather than obviously a Royal Ascot race. Um, yeah, and I think they're running here and going, we're gonna we're gonna win this, and I do think he'll win this quite comfortably, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think that was a very good bit of form, and the 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 thing I quite like about this um, new owners, Wathan Racing, they've not gone and booked or, or retained moderate jockeys. They've gone and got some very good jockeys in in James Doyle, and I think William Buick gets a few rides as well. Um, yeah. I'm very happy with James Doyle on board, and I think Striking Viking will take all of the beating here. And it's the right price at 11 to 8. If you're not a fan of short price selections, maybe you might want to think of doubling these two up then. Um, the two shorties in the, in the race is granted. The other one being Jan Bruegel. Now, Jan Bruegel's efforts on debut looked looked good. Um, went off 7-2 to two and won over a mile and 2. Won by 8 lengths. Looked impressive. But then went to the Curra. Massive step up into Group 3. And won it, beating Trust Your Instinct. They were well clear of the rest. I think that's the important thing here. If you took out the runner-up, the um, JP horse, Jan Bruegel had won by a long way. And I think he's going to show that... 
I think he's going to show that he's a Group 1 horse um, in time. And a step up in distance will be absolutely fine. These uh, rivals are kind of, they're just about finding their level. Maybe they are Group 2, Group 3 class. Whereas I think Jan Brugger will demonstrate that um, he will be a Group 1 horse of the future uh, by winning tomorrow. So if you wanted to double them up at 11 to 8 and even money, you can just about get that. Let's just have a quick look. Just do this thing and let's do this to see what they show. They're saying at William Hill you can currently get evens and 11 to 8 about the pair. We move on to the 335 at Goodwood. Um, there are a couple of good races at Goodwood that I am going to ignore. I'm not interested. And going into this, I was kind of thinking, uh, I was looking at a three-year-old thinking, is there a three-year-old that's going to turn out to be really good here? Maybe. I don't think that's going to be enough to beat Emily Upjohn, to be fair, though. I had no issues with Emily Upjohn being beaten by Blue Blue being beaten by Blue Stocking last time. I thought that was a very, very good ride on Emily Upjohn. I thought it was a, a decent effort from Blue Stocking. Um, Content, who had finished third, should have won next time out in the Irish Oaks. Uh, didn't get a clear run. Blue Stocking um, went to Ascot, ran a huge race in the King George. King George the sixth stage, finishing second. It's rock solid form that from Emily Upjohn. And yeah, I don't think Opera Singer. I don't think Opera Singer is as good as um, content personally. And with that in mind, Emily Upjohn should retain, um, confirm the places with Opera Singer. And all of the rest, oh, I think Opera Singer is the clear, um, the best three-year-old. And the older horses just aren't good enough. They should not be good enough to win this. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy to side with the older horse here in Emily Upjohn and let's just have a look you can currently get two to one about Emily Upjohn there's a bit of money around for some of the other three-year-olds um opera singer is quite weak but yeah I'm, I don't want to take on Emily Upjohn I think the performances that Emily Upjohn have already done prove that she's still at a very very good level whereas opera singer just still has to get there in my opinion 445 um, the Bucciolati handicap over five furlongs. I can't get away from the favourite here, Kendall Roy. Pretty boring selection, another potentially boring selection, Kendall Roy. Um, Kate McGiven trains. Ryan has been booked to ride after a very comfortable win at Cork last time out, um, beating So Majestic in a premier handicap. That was only a few days ago. Comes back here, one at five to two. I mean... This is no harder. Yes, he's got a six-pound penalty. But you do have the assistance this time of Ryan Moore instead of Declan McDonoghue. Granted, he's, he's a plenty good enough jockey. Um, ground should be absolutely fine. Under a penalty, these this is one of those horses that could just show that he's very, very progressive. And to be fair, his form of one two one zero two one. he's only had the one poor run in his last five. Last six, sorry. Um, probably still progressing. Can't get away from it. 4-1 to one favourite, but should be 4-1 to one favourite. And Ryan's been booked to ride. Ryan wouldn't just ride anything. Um, he would want to have a really good chance um, if he was going to ride. And interesting, this is actually, what's that, tomorrow is Thursday. I believe he's off on Friday. He's going to America. So he could have gone, oh, I don't want to hang around. I want to get to America. Um, but he doesn't. He sticks around for this. And I think he sticks around because he's a horse that he really thinks will win. And finally, in the 5.55, the one-mile handicap uh, for three-year-olds, the horse that I quite like here is another Irish one. Um, it's Bill's Bar for Adrian Keatley. These horses that come over from Ireland can often get involved in these handicaps, and they've kind of been messing around with the trip. They started over five and six. They eventually went up to seven and a mile. Potentially might have thought when finishing second over a mile at Bath that just wasn't good enough. That was on heavy going, though. I don't think he wants heavy going. Um, then went to Nottingham on good ground. Again was good, finished third. Um, that was after a 90-day break. I think now he's got fully fit. He's also had a very nice prep run at York just a few days ago, finishing uh, second behind Finn Ironside. The step up, back up in trip, 
definitely looked like he needed that when finishing second at um, York because he went forward, looked like he was going to get swallowed up, battled on, and if it had been over another half a furlong, he would have got back up to win. Um, yeah, I think it's very interesting that they're more than happy to keep him going and say, yeah, we'll, we'll run again very quickly. Um, and because he's not won, the handicap has not really been able to do too much with him. Yes, he's... he's um, has been as high as 77 but his last three runs have all been off 76 and that he's left him on 76 he doesn't want to touch him i think that might be a mistake i think um under holly doyle tomorrow we might find that 76 is not the true handicap mark now he's over a mile on good to firm um and now he's got you know he's fully fit after a couple of good runs recently at nottingham and york and finally we have got through these very quick today at Galway, the horse I like tomorrow um, in the Galway hurdle. I'm going to take a chance on the four-year-old. Four-year-old or five-year-old? Four-year-old. Nürburgring. Nürburgring, to be fair, has been playing his or her, just having a his trade, uh, in top quality um, juvenile company. One at Fairy House in a grade three. Then finished third at Leopardstown in a grade two behind Carla Conti and Carl Jess. Obviously, Carl Jess um, went to win at Aintree and Punchestown. Um, went to Cheltenham, finished fourth behind Majbra, Carl Jess and Salva. Very good form. Then went to Punchestown, finished third behind Carl Jess and Bottler Secret. Very good form. Probably suggesting he, he's just short of juvenile grade one winning company. But he's plenty good enough to get placed. I thought it was a very uh, interesting run recently when they got him a fitness run on the flat, um, held up out the back, ridden forward, weakened late on, but I'm sure that was just with this race in mind. That was, what, 13 days ago? Uh, 14 days ago. 14 days ago, he's fully fit, um, into a handicap. If the juvenile form is as strong as I'm hoping it is, 139 might underestimate uh, Nürburgring, and uh, he is the one I like tomorrow um, in the Galway Hurdle. And you can currently get 10 to 1 about Nürburgring. Obviously, under control could be anything, uh, could be thrown in for um, Nicky Henderson. I'm just hoping that the four year old, the juvenile form, is a little bit stronger um, or stronger than it has currently been rated. Um, so yeah, they are my selections tomorrow. We've got through them very quickly. Let's go over them again very quickly. Blake in the first. Uh, that last time out performance was very good. The step up in trip has really worked. Um, hopefully he can continue that Rich Vader form. And you can currently get eights about him. The Striking Viking, I think, is a great purchase from Wathan Racing. Uh, they're coming here to win this race. Um, and I think he will. His second last time out in Ireland was very good form. Jan Bruegel in the Group 3. I think he'll turn out to be a Group 1 horse. Uh, they're winning this en route to something better, I'm sure. You could potentially put them in a double, the last two. Emily Upjohn in the Nassau Stakes. I think she's better than the three-year-olds. I think her last time out form uh, was very good behind Blue Stocking and in front of... Who was it in front of? Whoever it was in front of, I'm forgetting the name uh, at the moment. Um, I was also distracted by something outside my window. Um, I like Emily Upjohn. I think she will take all of the beating. Kendall Roy. Ryan Moore staying around to ride. Uh, I think he, would, he wouldn't he would want to ride any old thing, particularly in a, a Class 3 handicap. He rides for Cape McGiven because I think that horse is just in such a rich vein of form that he almost feels it's a, a surefire winner for him. Uh, Bill's Bar in the last at Goodwood. The handicap has left him alone on 76 for the last three runs. This step up in trip, good to firm ground. Or step back up in trip, good to firm ground. I think he'll go really well under Holly Doyle. And finally, in the last, uh, or the, in the Galway hurdle, sorry, the one I like here is Nürburgring. I'm hoping the juvenile form is stronger than what he's currently been assessed. 